So you already kind of know about targeting a specific area in traditional marketing, whether it be you know print advertising, running flyers down the street, putting out a local um, ad in, in a local TV channel. But you might not be as familiar on targeting in a specific geographic area doing geographic marketing online through digital marketing. How do you get started with that? How do you use that? How do you leverage that on different platforms? That's what I'm going to be addressing on today's episode of the BPNJ podcast. I'm your host, John Lint. Let's get started. So, as I mentioned, in the traditional forms of marketing, it, it, it tends to be pretty geographically linked, right? Your local news station is going to be transmitted broadcast locally. So if you're running a, a restaurant or you know, a, a, you're a realtor or if you're um, a medical practice, those the traditional marketing is pretty much guaranteed to target a specific area, a specific demographic. But online things can get a little trickier. You know, you go on your phone, you you pull up TikTok, you might be getting videos from across the world. And if you're a business trying to advertise on these platforms or trying to get your name out there, you know. So if you're like if you're a restaurant in Florida, you may have a really strong following in Washington, and that's all well and good, but they're probably not going to go to your restaurant anytime soon or, or very often. So targeting your area and going a little bit more in the geographic specificity for who you're trying to interact with is really important. I mean, you know, the, I talk about like that of being states away but if you're in a big city there's tons of people in your area and you might be wanting to target like even just a specific neighborhood you know and with these big cities that can be a little tougher so it's no longer just oh i'm targeting someone across the state i'm targeting someone you know in a different borough in a different neighborhood or whatever it is different district so how do you maintain that geographic specificity? That's not, now I, I will do a disclaimer. You don't have to just target a specific area. You can reach people out and about, especially if you're on, offering an online service, you know? But don't discount it. Don't, don't sleep on it, as, as they say. Do what you can to to get some engagement in your area, especially if it's an in-person service, for obvious reasons, right? You know that. But what can you do? One of the, the biggest things, one of the platforms that pretty much everyone's on, your business is probably on. If your business isn't on this, get on. what are you doing? Get on it right now. Facebook. Facebook allows you to a certain degree to target geographies, especially in advertising. However, you need to be very careful in how you present that because you don't want to, like people don't want to feel like, oh, this is kind of weird that they're like being super specific, you know? People don't want to see an ad. Like, I don't want to see an ad that says, "Hey, John, I know you. I know you're uh, living in Southern Illinois, doing that marketing stuff. How's that going?" Like, that feels un that's uncomfortable, right? And Facebook knows that, so Facebook makes sure that businesses aren't uh, exploiting that information. I mean, that that was like a, a whole thing that came out, but. So if you're doing digital marketing via advertising, especially with Facebook, you can't be too overt about targeting a specific area. Even if you are, people need to feel like the, the content came to them in a more organic fashion, right? Rather than just, okay, well, I live in this town, so I got this ad which says, hey, do you live in this town? Like, that, that just, it, it feels kind of sleazy. 
you know. Um, but that, you know, Facebook, it, it, it really works to, with organic posts, with organic content, allow for the geographic targeting. So, you know, checking in, you can, um, you, I mean, obviously a company, you know, advertise, includes their location. Make sure that you're including some degree of address for your business, because that's going to help. Like if, if I'm searching up a realtor, it's going to try to show me realtors in my area. If I look up a restaurant, it's going to try to show me restaurants in my area. So including local information, talking about local events, right? Especially on Facebook, posting about those things is very powerful, very impactful for reaching that local audience or area specific audience. If you're not necessarily trying to target local, if you're trying to, let's say you are in Florida and you're trying to target some people in Washington, you need to be using you know, the locally things because Facebook will see, oh, this person's in Florida. Why would I deliver it to people in, in Washington? You need to give them a reason. You need to be talking about Washington specific things. You need to be posting about Washington specific things and using those hashtags, using those keywords in a non-spammy fashion because if you throw in a ton of hashtags and a, th and a ton of like a word salad of keywords, then it's going to get flagged. And that mindfulness makes a difference. That that attention, detail, and care is going to be the difference between great organic outreach and stuff that just gets thrown by the wayside. So one thing that I specifically wanted to kind of get into and address a little bit more was those hashtags. What can you do with hashtags? How can you leverage hashtags effectively and use those to better deliver your content or get your face out there to a specific geographic audience? This is where this is where things like names come in, especially on other platforms. If you're tweeting, if you're Instagramming, if you're on Google My Business, or even, I mean, heck, YouTube. I just found out about that, which was surprising. Um, YouTube does work with hashtags in a specific way, but it does. Try to include some local specific stuff. So this is, you know, what would we be talking about? Include hashtags that are specific to your area. So if I'm in Carbondale, then I might say, I might do hashtag Carbondale, hashtag uh, Carbondale nightlife, hashtag so ill, you know, those specific things that people only use in your area are going to kind of create the specificity in geography, which you're, you're trying to accomplish, right? If you're trying to accomplish that. So this isn't just limited to, you know, the, the, the name of the town, the name of the city, the name of the neighborhood you're operating in. Those are important, but things that other organizations, groups, people in your area, those hashtags that they use, use those too. Because, I mean, there's a reason they're using them. There's a reason that your geography is being associated with them. And, you know, with a little bit of due diligence, learning about the local hashtags and, and keeping up to date with them, you can make a ton of impact with reaching that local audience. <clears throat> because it's going to, I mean, look, what's the point of all of this? To give these platforms an idea of the kind of content you're offering. That's the basic thing. Who are you trying to who uh, speak to and who will get the most out of your content, right? Facebook, Instagram, Google. If someone is searching for a restaurant, 
and they're like, they're like, I'm hungry. I need to find something. These platforms don't want to show them, you know, some restaurant three states over. They want to show them local stuff. If if so, I mean, and that's true of like all the all these local industries, especially in person stuff. These platforms want to deliver the audience stuff that they think is going to be the most effective to them. They they want to give people stuff that they're going to engage with that they want to find. And showing I am a local business, I am a local group will make that easier for you in terms of being being delivered up, right? So as I was saying, you need to do the hashtags of the area like hashtag so ill, hashtag Carbondale, hashtag Illinois, you know, hashtag Carbondale my life, whatever it is. But also do specific things. Um, g- great example. Right now, uh, com- we're coming up pretty soon. Uh, we In Heron, we have the Heron Festa Italiana, which is a, a fun thing. All these different organizations get together and, you know, celebrate the, the, the rich culture, cultural heritage. And it's just like a great time. Lots of food, lots of things to do, you know. So if I was posting right now, especially if I was posting about like a local deal or what, you know, what we're doing, uh, if I was involved with that or like, so if I was a restaurant and I was catering for a specific thing during this event, I might say Heronfest, Heronfesta, you know, that allows for the local specificity. If in your area, I don't know, you, you, you always see the hashtag um, a new creek for whatever reason. You should include a new creek in your in your hashtags. Whatever it is, as long as it makes sense for your business. And like, what do I mean by that? If a lot of people um, like to drive cars in your area and they say, cool cars dr- f- drive in fun and you aren't related to roadways, cars, or anything like that, or those activities, anything like, then it doesn't necessarily make sense. But just throwing in those local hashtags is going to better serve you and better deliver you to your local audience. That's what this whole thing is about. If you can only take one thing away from this, try to communicate with your audience in a geographically oriented way through those hashtags through the 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 specific geographic targeting without being too overt because you're not saying hey you live in Carbondale so buy from me right you're not saying hey you live in um you know hey you live in Michigan so buy from me you're saying it's all about that framing because you're saying hey we are are operating in this area we know about this area here let me let me show you how connected we are with this geographic area because if you're looking for our services like ours we're the people we got you because we know you know we're not just some random company we're a company right next door and i promise you employ these practices put them into you know do do your stuff throw in a few local hashtags talk about a few local events it will make a difference so after all that i hopefully you can take kind of your some of your knowledge about the local area that you've been employing for traditional marketing and move that onto the digital space you want to that same level of specificity and geography that you're getting and with traditional marketing you want to be getting on the the on social media on on the in the digital space you can do it i believe in you 
and it, it's just going to take some work. Okay? But that's all I have for you for this week. I'd like to thank you so much for listening and or watching or tuning in in general. Um, like and subscribe and I'll talk to you next week.